Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the top 10 best value pocket knives of 2023. I'm gonna give you guys some timestamps. You can go to the part of the video that you wanna watch, but stay here for context, please, so you understand what's going on. This is not a list of the best budget knives of 2023. This is best value. So you're gonna get some knives that are inexpensive and you're also gonna see some knives that are expensive, but the point is they're a good value for what they are. They are absolutely in order. And that means that number one on this list I think is the best value pocket knife of 2023, hands down. I will link everything that I possibly can right down in the description. The good news is, is that the vast majority of these are absolutely available, so you can absolutely pick them up if you want to. That is, of course, entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're gonna be moving along quickly, but if you wanna see full comprehensive reviews of, e of any of these knives, you can simply look up the name of the knife and of course, Metal Complex in the YouTube search bar. So starting off here with number 10, fans of actual budget knives will be very happy to find out that the Maiguron Talisum comes in at $30. Seriously, one of the best, I mean, and just dollar for dollar utility. This is one of the best ever. 30 bucks, I think it's like $29.95 or something like that. G10, we have a liner lock with good geometry. We have nice flipping action. We have a nice D2 satin finished blade been sharp and well, runs on bearings, good overall ergonomics, good pocket clip, mountable for lefties or righties. This is just a good knife all the way around, and I love the fuller in there, being able to reverse flick it or just flick it out however you want to, right? That's a big deal. Migron is known for value. This is not the first time they've done this, but man, 30 bucks, like for real, that's that's really knocking it out of the park, uh, especially now in 2023 where it's almost laughable, the idea of getting a really good pocket knife for 30 bucks, right? But yeah, here it is, the Migron Talisum, and it's a good size, honestly. I wear XL gloves, and this isn't too small for me. Really, it's a good sized pocket knife. Not gonna take up too much room in your pocket, though, so just about the perfect size for a lot of people. Moving on here, we're gonna switch gears and go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Number nine is the Migron Arma. Now, the reason I'm saying that this big honking chunk of titanium and M390 is a good value at $295 is simply put, there is nothing else in the direct competition path for this knife. This knife has a quarter inch stock of M390 and nearly the same of titanium slabs on either side. If you want a knife made of these materials in, this, in these dimensions, you're literally looking at at least $100 more. I have never seen a knife that's made of this this thick of, of M390, this thick of materials in general. And you know what? They're doing a decent job of the heat treat on this. I think it's 59 to 61. Now, you know, the, the typical, you know, comment section skeptics will be quick to point out, thicker materials don't necessarily equate to better utility. Yeah, we, we know that, right? But there's a, there's a, a healthy market for people who just enjoy the novelty of overbuilt knives, not because they expect them to be more durable or more capable, simply because they like the big, junky, thick knives. This is kind of resurfaced in 2023. This is the way that it is. I like this stuff, despite knowing, of course, you can get more utility with a lot of other stuff. But if you're somebody who likes this and you're just put off by the fact that so many of them are so horrifically expensive, this is still expensive, but there's literally nothing else on the internet that is built the same way for less money. This The Migron Arma is the least expensive knife in its dimensions with its materials in existence. So, But because it doesn't equate to universal utility, right? Or even just general utility. I mean, it's okay. For a knife that's as big and thick and chunky as it is, it's actually a fairly reasonable carry. It's still heavy, not nearly as big as some of the other stuff I've covered on the channel this year. So at $295, honestly, it's a winner in my book. Moving on here to number eight, switching gears and going back to something that's not quite as expensive, nowhere near as expensive actually, and that's going to be the Kaiser Brat. There's going to be some repeats as far as lists on this channel because there's a lot of stuff that belongs in multiple categories for best of 2023. The Kaiser Brat is the only G10 integral that I know of. What does that mean? It means that the frame is made out of one solid piece of G10 versus knives that use two separate pieces of material and are screwed together. 
Why is this cool? Well, it makes it a little bit easier to maintain because you don't have really any body screws. You just have the pivot screw. But on top of that, you have a really, really good and very dependable, I've tested this thing multiple times on camera, a really good uh, uh, flipper tab, a really good button lock, and you have an excellent EDC 154CM drop point blade with a beautiful stone watch finish. And you can get this thing for 80 bucks, which makes it almost a budget knife by my definition. Honestly, I just think that's amazing. You guys have heard me talk about the Kaiser Brat for a while now, and I just I feel like there are so many people missing out on this knife. It really does make for an excellent EDC, and I think one of the most interesting elements here is, of course, it is an integral. We just don't see that. You usually don't see that unless you're buying something in titanium, and it's a lot more expensive, and we have that on this, on this list too. But Kaiser Brat, well-deserving of the number eight spot on this list for 2023. Moving on here, going back to something a little bit more expensive, and that's going to be the Olone Goat or Olone Goat Axle. Um, this is Riot's, this is a, a Riot produced knife, and it's Riot's, Riot's first um, crossbar lock. Not only did they nail it, they used high tension Omega Springs, so this has a super high quality feel to it. Honestly, it's a lot like getting a crossbar lock Sabenza for way less. They did an absolutely beautiful job. On the finish here, this is M390, properly heat treated, by the way. Beautiful inlay work. That's typical for Riot. Contour titanium. Awesome crossbar lock. Awesome pocket clip. I wish that it was lefty capable. Come on, it's an, it's an ambidextrous locking system, right? But here's the kicker. If you're familiar with Riot, then the price tag has already blown you away on this. Riot likes to bring knives to the table for a bare minimum of what seems like about 350 bucks. You can get this knife if, when it's available in titanium. It's a little tricky to find. For 260, I was pretty shocked. I, I I didn't know that they were that they were willing to bring knives down to that price point. Riyadh has some of the best manufacturing quality on earth. Yes, I said that correctly. People who are unfamiliar with Riyadh, and then you find out they're made in China, they're like, "This guy couldn't possibly be serious." I'm dead serious, and you'll hear this echoed in many corners of the knife world. Riyadh has some of the best manufacturing quality on earth. And it's hard to understand exactly what I'm talking about until you actually handle one. But the Olone Goat Axle, God bless it. What an amazing knife. It really is. Amazing quality for 260 bucks. Moving on here. Also something more on the expensive side, but still very impressive. Look at this. The Artisan Cutlery Satir, or I, I believe it's Satyr or Satyr, um, in S90V and titanium. So... This is not just a properly heat-treated S90V blade. Sorry, I'm trying to wipe off my fingerprints here because we want to look at this beautiful, seeing some of the drawings that my, picture, my, my kids have uh, created for my office down here. Um, this beautiful sand-polished or sand-washed S90V blade. Some of the, one of the best finishes that you can get on a knife at this price point uh, in 2023. It is absolutely beautiful and substantially more reflective than the super boring belt satin finish that so many companies default to. Not only is it beautiful to look at, but it is an extreme performer with S90V steel. Beautiful, contoured, and textured titanium scales. Awesome titanium frame lock with good access to the lock bar and plenty of access to the opening hole here, making the reverse flick very easy to do. Great ergonomics. Pocket clip is milled and made of titanium and not super long. I don't know what the deal was with so many companies deciding their pocket clips needed to be clear down here. That's stupid. This is the right place for it. Milled backspacer. Really, really awesome stuff for $199. It does not take long, even if you're not familiar with these companies, these materials, I'm, it sounds like I'm speaking a different language. It won't take you very long to type all of these words into the Google search bar and realize, huh, there's not a lot of other companies offering this exact same level of value, especially when you consider the beautiful polish on this blade. Um, I'm a huge fan of S90V knives under 200, even when they don't have the beautiful finish. And even when they're not the best overall EDC profile or the most convenient, this thing actually has all of that stuff. I am dead serious when I tell you guys, I've handled knives that are $600 more than this knife, not made in the same place, obviously, $600 more that feel like the same or worse execution. This is a beautiful knife at $199 and it is, it's truly phenomenal. I am, uh, I'm really happy to say that Artisan Color is just, uh, Really nailing it this year. Moving on here, here's another one I've been talking about all year and definitely on the less expensive side. For those of you really wishing that every single knife on this list was a budget knife, I know, but it's not. 
But here's another inexpensive one, and that's the Migron Moyarl. Perhaps, perhaps the best budget knife of 2023. The Migron Moyarl comes with a PVD coated 14C28N blade. We have steel liners, G10, full backspacer, and a titanium pocket clip. That's probably right on the line, right? Nope, it's 49 bucks. Wow, on top of that, it's not just the materials you're buying, you're actually buying a really, really good design. It's honestly kind of like a weird Spyderco hybrid liner. I mean, it really, in a lot of ways, it just makes me think of the budget Spydercos, but just executed way better. I mean, if you're buying a budget Spyderco, you're already buying a Chinese knife. You're just buying it with subpar materials and fit and finish. Tenacious, I'm looking at you. Sorry. Hey, listen, if guys, if you like your Tenacious, that's fine. But they're overpriced and the fit and finish is crap and so are, so are the, the materials they use. HCR 13 MOV, are you kidding me? This is miles ahead of that. My Duron is laughing. The dust is just barely settling around Spyderco's budget line as this thing blasts towards the finish line. It's, it's, it's just head and shoulders above it. Beautiful, beautiful fit and finish. Amazing ergonomics. Very easy manipulation. The materials are just fantastic. I mean, you can't ask for better. I mean, it's hard to ask for better materials. You get a titanium pocket clip. Honestly, in 2023, Migron Moyarl, perhaps the best budget knife of 2023. All right, moving on here to the most expensive by a long shot on this list. That's going to be number four. And that's the Wii and GTC Solid Integral. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking. Oh my gosh, that is ugly. I cannot believe that you put that on the list. Ah, aesthetics are subjective, right? There's no universal pretty. I think this looks really, really good, but it's not why I'm putting this on the list. I'm not saying I just like triangles and rectangles and this knife is a series of triangles and rectangles and that's why it's on the list. No, let me tell you why it's on the list. Not only is this a production GTC design with the spring-loaded flipper tab. That's cool. The thing is an integral. And it's been executed in a way that it's just, it's almost like we has this secret department where a few of their models are made in this super secret area where they have alien technology. And then everything else is made in the regular lab or the regular workshop, right? This seems to be from the alien department where the fit and finish, and it's not like Wii knives are not made well, they are. But this is, holy crap, this is miles ahead of where they usually are. The finish on this, oh my gosh, the machining. Look at what's involved here. This is unreal. We almost have like this polished orange peel texturing going on. Now this is the silver bead blast that we've got on this guy. They do come in a number of other finishes. We have a compound ground. This is not a simple blade for sure. Compound ground, CPM 20 CV blade. Beautiful action. This thing is an absolute dream to flip. Now, uh, this is expensive, but again, when you look at the competition and you look at how the competition is executed, I think the Wii GTC Solid is again laughing in the face of its competition. This is at base a $425 knife. I know, I know, I know that's expensive when we're just comparing materials or we're just talking about knives in general. But again, we have to consider the whole package. The compound ground tanto, the incredible machining on the uh, integral titanium frame, right? The uh, integration of the GTC spring-loaded flipper tab. There simply is not another integral titanium frame lock on the market that brings this much for less. It doesn't. There are other integrals on the market that are slightly less and utilizing the same materials. But did they deliver the whole package? Did they deliver something more impressive than this? They did not. And it's still, it's still only slightly less, right? So uh, this, I mean, if there was an integral of the year award, yeah, it's, go, it's going here. I, I have to give this, I can't ignore this for value. I handle so many knives. I uploaded almost 800 videos this year. I handle a lot of knives. I'm telling you, this is amazing. If you're going to spend that much on a knife, you get that's one of the craziest packages you can get right now. Moving on here, we finally have an American knife for the list. You guys know what it is. Number three, the Kershaw Launch 16, specifically the non-serrated uh, version. Sorry, serrated fan club. I don't really like serrations. You can like them though. That's fine. Get whatever you want. This is an American automatic knife. It's also the only automatic knife on the list. Uh, M4. CPM M4 and Kershaw's excellent overall fit and finish and execution. And we have 6061 T6 aluminum scales. In this case, they've been anodized uh, OD green. And then we have the track tech inserts. A little bit of texturing in there. 
Overall design for EDC and utility, right? Fantastic. The blade steel, uh, cho the choice. If you don't need a if you don't need a stainless steel M4 is amazing, excellent. Uh, edge retention very comparable with M390, but much tougher. Excellent traditional ergonomic lines, and you can get this American-made automatic knife for 148. No wait, it's what 150 dollars. 150 dollars. Honestly. Uh, if you didn't know, right, if you're like, oh, well, Chinese knives and American knives can't be that much different, right? All these American companies charging four or five hundred bucks and ripping everybody's face off. A lot of times what you're seeing there is a small batch, fully in-house, like literally make their own screws type of company versus a company like Kershaw that's mass producing things, right? Um, where their, their costs and, and uh, what they're actually profiting on, which is volume, it's much different. So the model, the business model is different, right? It's not that simple. But still, the fact that Kershaw is able to pump out a, a U.S.-made automatic knife in CPM M4 and aluminum for $150 bucks in 2023, I, I think miraculous is the right word for that. I, I love this knife. This is one of my favorite autos of all time, Like, let alone the fact that it's, it's just a, a, a great value for 2023. It's one of my favorite automatic knives ever. The power is great. The profile is great. They even have mounting positions for lefties, right? You're going to have to use your index finger, but you can use it. Really, really good stuff. Honestly, very impressive for 2023. Moving on here to number two. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked that this is not number one. But simply put, I mean, <laughs> just in materials alone, I, I don't know how they're how they're doing this and and you know profiting a substantial amount. That's the Max Ace Black Mirror Two. Now with in this case, they don't all come like this, but copper carbon fiber titanium scales. And an S90V blade, wonderful, wonderful EDC profile. Love that sheep's foot blade. Can even do the reverse flick and all that. This guy, this version of it you're looking at right there, $148. The base price of the Black Mirror 2 with just plain tie scales and S90V, $140. And yeah, they are actually heat treating this correctly. If they're accurately, you know, if they're they're accurately displaying their range, 59 to 61. A lot of people look at that and go, oh, I've heard that's really bad for M390. This is not M390. S90V has a different optimal range, and this is it as far as I understand. And it is superior to M390 in terms of edge retention. S90V and titanium, I don't think you can actually get this literally anywhere else on the internet where it is um, being properly produced, right? Where you're getting this level of fit and finish, this level of manufacturing quality, right? The right heat treatment, a design that actually makes sense for EDC and is not like a metal pine cone or hand grenade, right? Some stupid thing with dragons all over it that you got from DH Gator Alibaba. Yeah, I know. A lot of people are going to take that as, uh, you know, a real uh, sledgehammer blow to the face. But I'm going to tell you right now, if that's where you shop, that's a bad place to shop for knives. Sorry. Um, even if you sometimes might see a Max Ace there, I just find that to be kind of a gross place to pick up knives. Um, but yeah, you're, you're really not going to find a better value on something that's properly executed. The Max Ace Black Mirror 2 uh, at $140 to $148 is simply magnificent. It really is incredible. Weird choice of color for the pocket clip and backspacer. I know the other one, the alternative one is blue. Max Ace. You gotta, if you're gonna offer these colors, you gotta offer just the plain gray, right? I think they actually do with the plain version of the knife. But anyways, we gotta move on to number one here. And everybody already knows what it is because I keep showing it in all these different lists. But the reason is, it's not because I'm being lazy, it's because this knife is actually the best of blank in so many different categories for 2023. Sincerely, this knife might, on my channel, win knife of the year. I honestly think it's that good, and it's really because the value is off the charts. So I'm going to talk about this knife again, and that's the Civivi and Snex Vision FG with the fully ambidextrous super lock. In this case, we have Ultim scales, steel liners, and Nitro V steel, but that super lock, oh my gosh, fidget factor supreme. It operates off the spine, so left to right-handed people, ambidextrous people, what you have here is simply an ideal daily EDC knife. It's compact, it's lightweight, but it's still full size. It has a fantastic blade profile. Nitro V Steel is very, very good, very balanced. The, honestly, the cherry on top here 
and yeah lefties you can mount the pocket clip the cherry on top for this is not not only does it come in a bunch of different scale ma uh, materials and colors because i know like not every like not everybody likes the pp yellow of ultim the knife comes in at 78 dollars god the only thing that bothers me is that they just couldn't get it down not that they price their things in accordance with my channel and the way I define budget knives, but if they got this thing to $74.99, I could have called it a budget knife. Honestly, I don't even care. $78 is more than fair for easily the most interesting thing Civivi has ever come up with, and they didn't even come up with it. This is a Snex design, right? Um, the, uh, the Vision FG is, oh my gosh, like it's, you you're not going to find something more interesting. It's okay if you look at it and you're like, I don't really like how it looks, right? But as far as like something that operates like this, and the super lock is not a gimmicky thing. Not only is it easy and convenient to manipulate, it's actually a super strong lock. This thing locks up completely solid and is substantially more reliable than your standard liner lock or frame lock, right? The way that it locks up is actually super. It's not a gimmick. This thing is good to go. I love this knife. I carry and use it all the time. And I'm somebody, honest, I've got over 200 knives in my personal collection. Some of them are multiple thousands of dollars. And a lot of those I don't shy away from carrying. I, I honestly prefer to carry the Vision FG a lot of the time. It's, it really is just that good. Guys, guys and gals, people of, from all walks of life, that's going to be it for the best value pocket knives of 2023. Like I said, everything's going to be listed right down in the description in order. Let me know what your favorite knives of 2023 were, whether it's best value or whatever, whatever you think, whatever you want to tell me. I know that there's probably 40 other pocket knives that could have made this list, but that's the thing with the top 10. There can only be 10. So these are my picks. You can let me know what yours are down in the comment section. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.